Man, I've been feeling sick all friggin' week. But who cares? Not anymore. Let's go thrifting. I'm not feeling terribly adventurous today, so we're just gonna hit up a few Goodwills. Checking out the glass case near the front first off, and yeah, pretty much just the typical random assortment of new games left over from Target. <laughs> Although, right next to the case, you have this right here, which lets you know that you are indeed shopping at a Goodwill in North Carolina. Yes, this is one of Tony Stewart's tires, certified by Joe Gibbs Racing of NASCAR. Ooh, learning to speak five modern languages. Well, modern in the uh, late 50s, it appears. Although I guess they haven't changed too much, but yeah, not exactly what I'm looking for today. Ah, this is more my style, brats, rock angels. Of course, there's no disc inside, uh, what a loss. Now, here's something that actually strikes my fancy. This is the Cirque Glide Point Portable. Perhaps a future bit of oddware here. This is basically a touchpad for your desktop. Speaking of different, here's a piece of CAD software. It's Drafix Quick CAD. These things always intrigue me, but for seven bucks, it's a bit much. Of course, something that I just can't pass up for seven dollars is Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is version 5.0 for DOS. Really cool, I actually did not have this version. Also found Need for Speed Most Wanted for the PSP, but of course, the disc is not inside. Jerks! Oh, hey, Impossible Mission for the Wii? I had no idea they remade this game. Thankfully, this was taped up so the disc was inside, and that's cool. I definitely grabbed this because I just want to try it out. I like the original. I also found Sonic Colors for the Nintendo DS. For $5, yeah, whatever, I'll take a chance on it, and the box is really cool. I like that sort of uh, hollow foil thing going on. Ooh, an Atari 2600. Looks to be in pretty decent shape, and $29, it at least does come with the video cable. No power cable, though. Ah, whatever, I've already got a ton of these, but it's still cool to see them in the wild. Speaking of in the wild, look at this wild thing. This right here, <laughs> besides looking rather hideous, is a Hewlett Packard space ball. This is made for, well, CAD programs as well as other 3D design stuff. This lets you manipulate things in 3D space, supposedly more easily. It's just too odd not to pick up. Ooh, yeah, Tiger Electronics game. Here is Ninja Gaiden. Only a dollar, awesome price, totally would have gotten it, but the screen looks completely ruined. It's all mashed up, and there's some, like, weird stuff going on with the liquid crystal, so, ugh, that sucks. Oh, hey, what's this box up here? And, of course, over in the women's accessories, I found all of these Saints Row 4 Wub Wub Special Edition Collector's Edition items. 30 bucks for them, though? That's just way too friggin' much, but, yeah, it's always amusing when you find all this stuff at Goodwill. And look at all these things for uh, Dead Island Riptide as well. Oh, and then down here, <laughs> oh, oh, poor Duke. Yeah, these are the Duke Nukem Forever busts that came with the Balls of Steel edition of the game. Oh, uh, what happened? Sorry, Duke, that's what you get when Gearbox releases a subpar game about you and nobody buys the special editions. Over in the random junk section, I found some random junk as well as this right here. Uh, this is a mouse pad from Ducks Unlimited that also comes with Duck Hunter Pro. Okay, well that's just weird enough that I've got to get it, especially for $2. This game is apparently by Head Games. Yep, the same people that did Extreme Paint Brawl and Extreme Boards and Blades. Oh man, are these... are these shake weights? Uh, yep. Oh yeah, that's definitely what they are. Now I feel dirty. How do they ever sell these things? <laughs> uh, anyway, I think after that I need to go to the Salvation Army store. And right inside, uh, oh, there's a lioness. Just chilling over here on the couch. Nice lion. Back in the puzzles and board games, though, I happen to run across something that's for the PC. This right here is Interplay Game Fest. Yes, it comes with Starfleet Academy Chekhov's Lost Missions, Star Trek New Worlds, Starfleet Academy Strategic Command, and just Starfleet Command. Yeah, normally I skip on shovelware compilations like this, but yeah, Star Trek, man. You'd have to use the force to resist this. Over in the books, I happen to run across an animated storybook. I do like some of these, but the only ones that I really collect are the ones that I remember playing as a youngster. And oh, poo, this is not one of them. 
Over in the generic CDs, I found some generic PS1 games, although I got it. It's the wrong direction that drives me crazy. Anyway, this is Qbert. Oh, cool. This is a game I didn't have. May as well get it. Also happened to run across Extreme Pinball for the PS1, which is awesome. I didn't have it for this system, and this is the sequel to Epic Pinball, one of my favorites. Oh, hey, Top Gun Jets on VHS. Oh, man, this looks like one of those things I would have borrowed from the library years ago and just, like, watched and thought it was so cool. Because being a little boy in America... Oh, here's a box that I just cannot resist. This is full of travel adapters from, that looks like, the past 30 years. I don't know why, but I find these kind of collections just fascinating. I seriously spent, like, 10 minutes looking at every one of these in detail. It was awesome. Over in the electronics, I happened to find, uh, ComShare 350 telephone line sharing device. Talk about one of the most boring things ever, and also something that is so woefully obsolete now that it is completely useless. Kinda love it. Over in the keyboards, though, I did find something of interest, and, uh, that is underneath these others here. This is an Apple ADB extended keyboard. These are quite well-known keyboards for 90s Apple users, and I already have quite a few of them or I would have gotten it, but it did get me looking around for other Apple things just in case somebody dropped off some stuff, and they did. I found a case over here full of three and a half inch Apple floppy disks. All of it looking to be for software for Power Max, the 6100, 7100, and 8100 series, and System 7.5. I already have all of this stuff, and plus all of it I think is for free to download through Apple nowadays. So yeah, I had no need for any of it, but it was still cool. You don't normally see loose floppies. And lastly, moving on to my favorite Goodwill, and hey, the construction is pretty much complete. They're just finishing up the parking lot over here. Ooh, and look, they've added automatic doors. It's like the future. And yep, the section over here is just about finished off. They're really just adding some flooring and fixtures, and it will be ready to use. I anticipate the next episode will be walking through here. All things considered, it's looking pretty good. Except for the other side of the store over here where they've completely started ripping it up instead. Looks like they're building some sort of training center or something for employees over here. Now, this is where the clothing used to be, so I'm assuming that other section is going to be full of clothing now. Anyway, over in the rest of the store, let's take a look at the auction case because there's always some interesting stuff that I'll never have. Like some pretty sweet air rifles and samurai swords and other weaponry and a bunch of video games. Ah, oh, man, some cool Atari 2600 stuff and even cooler NES stuff over here. I mean, it has a lot of games, but oh, those poor boxes. Ooh, well, this isn't creepy at all. This is a seriously old school baby carriage thing. I, I don't even know. There's got to be a proper term for this because I mean, this is fully involved. It's got like hoods or, or bonnets or I don't even know what you call it. And those giant wheels and the, the wire everything. And it's all set for horror movies. Oh, look, an actual piggy bank. Oh, man, you know, I've always wanted to buy one of these just so I could put money in it and then smash it with a hammer. <laughs> like, that's the only reason I want one. Is that wrong? Speaking of wrong, oh dear, this is a classic wildlife collection, but I don't remember seeing any classic wildlife that looks like a Cerberus. That's quite the striking statue, I gotta say, it's kind of cool. Perusing the electronics, and eh, it's mostly junk today. Well, except for this down here. This is an old GE tube TV. I just love the look of these kinds of TVs. And, you know, if I had more space, I would so collect them. I, I just like old TVs like this. I love the switches. I love the tubes themselves and the hum and, like, the heat. And, ah, oh, it's just really cool. On the opposite end of the technology spectrum, we have a freaking Sony Blu-ray player. This is a BDP S300. Crazy that these things are already showing up at Goodwill. This is actually the second one that I have seen recently for, like, under $30 or $40. And just looking around the pots and pans and crappy coffee makers and, well, I don't know I, why this was here, but there was a PS1 controller, like the actual PS1. I really like the style of these. They have a cool connector on the end and the R2 and L2 buttons are nicely shaped. Over in the puzzles and board games and I saw quite a puzzling thing. Ah yeah, Printmaster Gold. Bonus pack. I have actually been looking for Printmaster Gold, a very specific version, for a long time now, so I always check these out. And unfortunately, this is not that version. The one I'm looking for is, well, I mean, I'll know it when I see it, but it's the one I had as a kid. One of these days, it'll be mine. 
Until then, hey, why not get this? Survive the Millennium Bug! Protect your PC while there's still time in the year 2000. Oh, Y2K. It was such a big deal. No, it wasn't. It, it was a big deal for no friggin' reason, basically, but this is my kind of thing, man. Heading towards the front again, and on an end cap over here, look at this. Ah, oh, Windows 98. Second edition is the upgrade, and yeah, you know, I passed on one of these a couple episodes ago. This one is like the opposite of that. It's in fantastic shape. Uh, and underneath that, it had SimCity 2000 Special Edition. My favorite version of one of my favorite games ever. And yes, I already own like 10 of these things, so I don't need another one, but it's just really cool to see such a nice condition copy just out in Goodwill like this. Over in the games, there's a pretty cool little find for someone, not me. This is Super Mario 64. I already own it, or I would have gotten it, especially because it's only $3. I think this is the cheapest version of this game that I have ever seen, at least in a store like this. Checking out the music CDs, cuz why not, and well, <laughs> I'm glad I did. This is Daggerfall, but not just normal Daggerfall, this is the interactive preview disc. Basically a demo that they sold or distributed with magazines and stuff like that. Really, really cool to find this as a lover of Daggerfall. And one other thing caught my eye here, and that is Guy Spy and the Crystals of Armageddon, a DOS cartoon adventure game that's very similar to Dragon's Lair from what I understand. Never played it, but hey, maybe I will now. And that is all for episode 14 of Thrifts. We got nine games, one of them with a mouse pad, two software packages, one PS1 controller, one goofy looking space ball thing, and one trackpad for desktop computers. All for about $41 total. This is a fun haul. I didn't go too many places and got some cool stuff anyway. Definitely came across some interesting things in the store as well. Some of these items I may never actually use. Like seriously, the space ball? I don't know, I'll probably do an oddware video on it or something if I can get the software for it, but yeah. Definitely some games and gaming devices that I will be playing with in here for sure. And I'll be really curious to visit that Goodwill store next time and see the hopefully complete construction. Well, that's it for this video though, and I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, then you might want to check out some of my other thrifting videos. There are 13 more prior to this, and probably going to be a lot more in the future, so stay tuned for that. You can also subscribe if you would like to be notified when more of them appear, and you can also follow and interact with me and others on Twitter and Facebook. You can also support the show on Patreon. It also lets you see episodes like this before anyone else. And as always, thank you very much for watching, as well as thank you for sending in your viewer finds once again. You all are just finding tons of awesome stuff out there thrifting. Keep sending them my way. Send them to my email address. That's the easiest way to get them to me. I'm still getting more than I can post here, but you know, that's how it goes. And yeah, that is it. We will see you next time.